Uh, welcome guys, welcome to Hisbourne. We are live. So just a bit of housekeeping as usual. You've got the chat. Feel free to use it. Ask me any questions. I might know, I might not know because it's actually my first time here. I was convinced I had been here before, but when I got to the station, I was like, no, I've never been here. I might have been here on an evening. Um, I might have been here for a comedy gig one night. That's probably why I thought I had been here. This, uh, this telephone thing behind me is actually making weird noises. Um, so yeah, uh, feel free to ask me any questions. Do, just bear in mind, it is particularly sunny today, so it's a bit harder for me to see the screen. So if I've missed any of your questions, don't be shy, uh, try again, because um, I, uh, I could have missed it uh, because of the sun. And um, it wants to talk to me, yes, exactly. I don't even know what type of noise it is, it's just like weird. Uh, anyway, let me flip this camera around and let's go. So for the ones that don't know me, uh, I'm Nathalie, and if you are new to, to me, you're very, very welcome. Um, I usually guide in London, but I'm done in, in, uh, in Eastbourne for the day. And let's go, I wane. We have a lovely little monument here for, uh, for, for, for Ukraine and, and Ukrainians. Um, it's, oops, I've just stepped into a big hole. Um, so that's, uh, that's lovely. Apparently it's not always here. It's only here for a few weeks and then they'll move it uh, to a, a, a different destination. Hi, Linda, <laughs> welcome. Let me show you the information. If anyone wanted to screenshot that and have a read uh, later. So, Eastbourne is a lovely, uh, uh, a lovely town uh, on, the, on the coast. We are in um, East uh, Sussex and um, it's not too far from London. It took me an hour and 20 minutes from, uh, from, from Clapham Junction and um, it is lovely. It is known to be a place where a lot of people come to retire. Um, apparently, on average, the population here is about five years older than elsewhere. Some people and journalists have even dubbed Eastbourne um, Heaven's uh, waiting room. Uh, and actually, with some of the stories I'll tell you today, uh, it's actually quite, uh, quite accurate. Um, so yeah, there's uh, a, a lot of people that uh, uh, move here when they, they, they get a bit older. It is meant to be the sunniest town in the, in the UK. So it's definitely the case today. It is a beautiful weather. You'll see once we reach the, the, the beach, there's a lot of people in the sea. I would have a little, uh, a little ploof myself if I, wasn't, uh, if I wasn't busy streaming. I'm actually here for a birthday today. So what happened is I have some friends that are celebrating a, a, a birthday here but they're actually walking. There's a lovely coastline. You can walk by the Seven Sisters Cliff, which is beautiful. Unfortunately, I couldn't join them early morning because I had a job this morning uh, at the Tower of London. And um, so I've, I'm only gonna meet them here for lunch uh, after I finish this tour. So sadly, I couldn't go for the coastal walk, but yeah, it's a, a lovely place to, uh, to come and see the cliffs. It's a long walk, they're walking about five hours. Uh, so they'll be exhausted when I'll be all fresh. Um, anyway, yeah, lovely, lovely, lovely town. It was built, it really developed in Victorian times, you know, with the, 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 the developing of the, of the railway, really. And it was built by gentlemen for gentlemen. So it's always been a little bit um, on, the, on the upper class side, uh, if you compare to, for example, Brighton. Um, which is the big uh, competition uh, town, really. Uh, there's always been apparently a little bit of competition between, uh, between Brighton and, um, and Eastbourne. And uh, a lot of uh, famous uh, 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 people used to come here on holidays, including uh, Charlie Chaplin, um, uh, Winston Churchill, and Lewis Carroll. Uh, apparently he came 19 times. I still need to, to do a tour about, about Lewis Carroll. Um, I'll take you to his resting place uh, soon. Actually, I should do, this, do that this month. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, there was an interesting doctor that lived here on this very street at some point. He was the original Dr. Death. 
Uh, today, when we talk about Dr. Dave, we often speak about, um, uh, what's his name, Harold uh, Shipman. You know, the, the horrible doctor that killed over a hundred ladies in, in the 90s. Well, Shipman was probably very much inspired by the case of a doctor that lived right here. His name was uh, John Bodkins Adams. John Bodkins Adams was uh, um, a doctor. So before the Second World War, um, you know, we didn't have the NHS yet. For the ones that don't know the NHS, it's the National Health System in, in the UK. So at the time, you know, you'd, you'd go to a doctor and, and, and you'd pay, you, you, you know. Um, and uh, Adams was from uh, Ireland originally. And he moved here to take care of the, uh, the wealthy uh, elderly, let's say. And he was, it was a, a Christian uh, practice, um, you know, because you'd pay for a doctor, you might as well go for a good uh, Christian ones. Uh, before the Second World War, he was already a little bit dodgy, but he had a very good reputation in Eastbourne. I mean, he treated some of the, 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 uh, the, 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 the people of high society, like the, the mayor or, or the, the, um, uh, the chief of police and all that. But there were already a few people that were a bit, let's say, surprised uh, by his behavior. Um, there was the case of Matilda Witten that had... Um, that had uh, uh, well, she had been injected by the doctor, and sadly she passed away. It turned out that uh, the doctor had, um, uh, well, she had given everything to the doctor in her will. So her step-children, uh, 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 they were not really happy. They actually tried to take the, court to to, the case to court, and uh, they lost. So the, the doctor got everything, all the inheritance from, from Matilda Witten. There was another lady called Carla that was, uh, she was in her 80s and she was um, uh, 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 quite unwell actually. She was being taken care of by the doctor as well. And one day there was a young nurse that um, she was about to go home on, uh, I think it was on a Friday, and she, she forgot her badge or, or whatever in, the, in, the, in Carla's bedroom. So she knew that the doctor did not like to be... Um, uh, uh, disturbed when he was with the uh, with the older ladies, and she listened at the door. She heard some verses of the Bible, so she was like, "Okay, that's not." Um, uh, oh, Shipman was your sister's uh, doctor. Wow, did she survive, uh, Mark? Uh, well, you know what? Actually, Jeannie, the voyager that I've just met, uh, she believes her grandmother was treated by um, uh, by Doctor uh, Adams. Um, so yeah, the, the nurse wanted to go and get her badge from the bedroom. So this is the building, by the way. That is where the doctor had his practice and his home for about, uh, for about 50 years. And um, so it was like, like a boarding home for the elderly where they'll come and, and, and uh, be treated here. And uh, um, so, so the young nurse listened at the door and she could hear some verses of the Bible. So she was like, Okay, that's fine. It's not the doctor, it's the reverend. Uh, the priest was really nice. He's not going to bother. So she slowly opened the bedroom and it was not the priest. It was the doc. Uh, Carla was half naked on her bed, clearly very unwell. The window was wild open with the February cold. And, um, and she, she was very confused because the, the lady was way too old to be exposed to this kind of cold. And she didn't say anything. The, the doctor was uh, saying prayers. So she grabbed her little uh, her badge, like a lanyard, and, and, and she left. She never said much about it. Um, but the, the doctor already started to have a, a, a bad rep, really. Oh, she was young, Mark. Okay, so that's why she survived. For the ones that don't know, because I know we, we, um, we, uh, in the UK, everyone knows Dr. Shipman, but for the ones that don't know, it was a doctor in Hyde uh, next to, to Manchester in the, in the 90s. Uh, they, figure out, they figured out that he had been basically killing a lot of his older patients for years. We do not even know for sure how many victims, but crazy guy. Anyway, 
so the uh, so this building was actually uh, uh, the the doctor bought it by um, he borrowed some money from one of his patients. Uh, he never gave it back, so he didn't even buy it with his own money. And um, Let's go and take a look at the seaside. So yeah, they were already before the war a, a, a few cases and the doctor started to have a very mixed uh, reputation. The people in town, as well as, um, as well as the nurses, they did not all agree on, on, on his behavior. There was a couple as well, um, Hilda, um, Hilda and William, they were good friends. You'd have to know that at the time, you know, the relationship with your doctor was a bit different. You know, uh, it, it, it was not rare to kind of start a, a ver to develop a, a, a very good uh, friendship with your family doctor, you know. And, um, and uh, uh, of course, uh, 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 Dr. Adams treated the wealthiest of, of, of society, really. He used to take some gifts from his uh, patients. We now believe that he was actually drugging them to get them to sign checks and stuff like that. Um, and actually, uh, the, the Millwood couple, um, uh, Hilda was, um, uh, uh, no, Edit, sorry, her name was Edit. Uh, he, well, the thing is, her husband was very unwell, William, and she once uh, passed by the door and she heard the doctor telling William to give, to, to give him all his money to give all his money transferred to the doctor and that he would take care of, uh, of Edith. So very, um, oh yeah, the, the evil personified. Yeah, I, I, think, I think doctors that kill, they're probably the worst because we put their trust into them to, to save us and to take care of us. You know, we, we take any pill out of a doctor, really. Um, and probably even more in the past than, than, than today, really. Today we kind of, uh, uh, we might be a little bit more careful and we might ask a second opinion. Um, but at the time, you know, the, you'd put all your trust into your dog, you know. And um, so, yeah, there were already quite a few cases like that. And, 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 and he actually kind of failed a few times. People, you know, went to see another, uh, another doctor or they left. And through the Second World War, he actually uh, uh, volunteered at a hospital here. Um, he was studying anesthetics and he had a terrible reputation at the hospital. Apparently he used to inject patients with the wrong drug and he was always uh, sleeping, eating cakes and uh, counting his money. And uh, uh, after the war, um, um, his bone was actually bombed quite a lot through World War II. Um, uh, it's the, the, the most... Uh, 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 bombed uh, town in the south uh, on the south coast really um, and uh, after the after the war he kind of went back to his, his dodgy practice but probably a little bit more organized he uh, to give you an idea he was the beneficiary of 132 wills from his patient um, sometimes it, Sometimes he probably was not even in their will, but sometimes he just got them to give them some gifts. Uh, he had two Rolls Royce, both, from, both from, from, from his patients. And people started to get suspicious in the 1950s, but the guy was, you know, he had some friends in high society. There is a bit of, there has been a bit of speculations that he might have been dating the, um, uh, the Maya. So a, a gay relationship, illegal at the time. You'd have to remember that homosexuality was illegal until 1970, uh, sorry, 1967. Um, and uh, he was also, uh, uh, the chief uh, uh, constable was also uh, uh, one of his patients. So, you know, he had some friends in high society. And uh, the, the Scotland Yard kind of got interested into his case when he had a patient that was, um, well, she was, only, uh, she was only 50 when she died, or 49 actually, Gertrude Ouellet. She, um, she, well, she, wa she had been with the doctor for many years. Uh, she was recently widowed. Uh, her husband, Jack, that passed away. It's actually the, the doctor that in introduced her on Jack. And she did, um, she did speak about, uh, about uh, taking her own life. And um, eventually she's very unwell. The doctor is giving her drugs. 
and the doctor cashed in a check from, uh, from uh, uh, Gertrude, a thousand pounds. And uh, that was a few days before her death. And the doctor actually called to get, um, to get a, a post-mortem. And when they asked, when did she die? Uh, the, uh, the, the doctor said, well, she's not dead quite yet. And they found it very suspicious, the, uh, the guys from the post-mortem. So they, uh, they decided to involve uh, uh, Scotland Yard. And, uh, and the next thing you know, uh, yes, the, the, the lady did pass. And um, that's how uh, an inspector, Inspector Henan, came down to, uh, to his board and started to study his case. And they found out that he had made so much money out of so many cases. Thank you. Um, and uh, uh, the, the police was overwhelmed. There were, there were just so, so, so many cases. And they, um, they decided to focus on 23 cases because some of the cases were too old, some were before the, uh, before the war. Let me jump on here to show you a bit of the, the bandstand. So that's the, the famous uh, um, Eastbourne uh, bandstand. And um, Inspector Hannan was actually not very discreet. He would go to the pub and he'd tell everyone in town what he was investigating. And, uh, and it kind of spread a lot of gossip and the gossip went to the press. So all the... Um, all the press was uh, calling him uh, uh, Dr. Death and, and stuff like that. So, you know, he, he, in a way, he could have never had a very fair trial. Um, so that was not a very good idea of the, the police officer. And eventually the persecution, the, 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 the police decided to take him down for one case. They could also, well, they could only take him to court for one case, All, although they were working on 23 cases and they were absolutely convinced. I mean, he had made so much money out of so many patients and there were some evidence that the, the, the pharmacy did give him a lot of morphine and he was not keeping, um, uh, you know, you had to keep a, a, a record of your dangerous drugs. Uh, already in the 50s, you had a, a, a dangerous drug, uh, drugs register and you had to, um, to fill that up. He did not. Um, well, 23 Marlin, that's only the ones that were investigated. Apparently, he probably was responsible for the death of... Uh, well, we think it could be 132. We, we just don't know. Um, it's just very... You know, a lot of those ladies... So the thing is, he was also involved in the um, cremation, which is technically illegal. If you are the beneficiary of a will, you shouldn't be uh, uh, signing the, the cremation and all that. Um, so that was definitely uh, illegal. So they took him down to, to court for a case that um, they believed was the best one. It probably wasn't the best choice. It was the case of Edith Morel. She was 81 when she died, but that was uh, uh, years earlier. So she had already been uh, uh, um, cremated, so they couldn't do an autopsy or anything like that. And uh, Edith had had a, a heart attack um, and she was left uh, a little bit paralyzed and she was then in the care of the doctor. She was very unwell and she put the doctor in her will. Then she changed her mind. We don't know why. Uh, she did give him a, a Rolls Royce. <laughs> and um, the, well, he did, um, he was giving her those uh, uh, secret in injections. Uh, the nurse were not allowed to, uh, to, uh, to be there when he did the injection. And, um, and Gertrude, um, no, sorry, Edith, uh, Edith passed away. Uh, and somehow Scotland Yard believed that this was the best case, the one in, in which they had the most uh, evidence. So the trial started at, started at, the, um, at the Old Bailey in London. 17 days the trial 17 days that was the longest trial ever seen in the in the history of this country at, the, at that point and guess what he was acquitted they just didn't have enough evidence although pretty much everyone knew well not everyone some people still believed in the good uh, the, the good dr adams um he, he was well he was acquitted he did lose his um uh, medicine license for, for a while because he had 
cheating on, uh, 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 cheated on uh, uh, prescription and he had definitely put people uh, uh, into cremation where he shouldn't have. Um, so they revoked his uh, medicine license or however you call it. But would you believe four years later he was allowed to practice again? The thing is, with his case, uh, the MDU, it's the, the Medical Defense Union, they were actually protecting him because, you know, they wanted to protect the, 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 all the doctors. Uh, you know, when you deal with dangerous drugs, you know, you don't want to be accused of, of murder. And actually, Adams claimed that he was not killing anyone. He was easing the passing of dying uh, patients and profiting out of it. Uh, but yeah, and would you believe he went back four years later to practicing medicine and he still was the beneficiary of many wills after that. So you'd think people would be more careful, but no, they still gave uh, some of their money to the good Dr. Adams. Um, so yeah, crazy case. And we now believe that it probably inspired um, uh, Dr. Shipman. Um, he did kind of influence the future of, of, of medicine, though. There was a legislation that was passed um, uh, that was passed after uh, uh, after the case. It's called, I think it's called the double effect bill or, or something like that. If a doctor prescribes a dangerous drug and the, pas the patients die, uh, then it's not the doctor cannot be uh, uh, taken down for for murder. Anyway, the building across the street here. It used to be number, number 22, so unless there was any uh, renumbering of the street, that was the, the spot of um, a Victorian school, uh, a boarding school, that was very expensive at the time. And in 1860 here, there was a very, very sad case. Um, you'd have to remember that in Victorian times, they believed in corporal punishment, you know? The, the kids at school would be, well, they'll be beaten up really, um, and sometimes quite bad. Um, what happened is, uh, some people already kind of knew that it was wrong, but, um, but they, still, uh, uh, they, still, uh, 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 they still went for it. There was a Quaker uh, years earlier, Joseph uh, Lancaster, that was against. He was completely against uh, corporal punishment. And he created the, the Lancaster method. It was a way of punishing kids without beating them up. Uh, he's the one that invented, for example, detention. But the thing is, uh, his punishment were a bit, uh, uh, a bit special. For example, he would put a, a kid into a sack, literally uh, 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 like a, a potato sack, you know, or a sugar sack, with only the heads coming out, and that was the punishment. They had to stay for the lesson in a sack. When he invented detention, detention was not good enough. He wanted to attach the kids. We now think that he had a bit of a fetish for bondage, really. And the thing is, people listened to him, he, he, you know, to his methods and stuff. The next thing you know, a few years later, he actually went down for beating up a kid and, um, and sexually uh, harassing uh, uh, and sexually assaulting children. He actually died in New York. So that's a shame because the only person that was going to help, the only person that, that really was, they had a chance to stop corporal punishment. Uh, he, made a, uh, you know, he made a joke out of the full story and then we went back to corporal punishment. And um, the, uh, the doctor that opened the, the, the school here, his name, not doctor, the professor, his name was Thomas Hopley. And uh, the school was very expensive. To give you an idea, it was about the equivalent of 22,000 pounds a year in today's money. So uh, uh, quite expensive. And there was a young boy that um, uh, was sent here by his dad. His dad was a judge. His name was Reginald Counselor. Reginald was, um, well, we think he was 15, but in some version of, in some documents, they say 14. He was, at the time, they described him as very stubborn. He refused to learn anything. He couldn't learn anything because he was so stubborn. Um, today, we would actually diagnose him with some learning difficulties. Um, and actually, when they did the autopsy later on, they did find that he had some kind of pressure on his brain. Um, anyway, 
uh, 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 Reginald was sent here to, to learn by his, his, his father. And when they came home, I think for Christmas, and he was full of bruises, his dad was not impressed. He, contact, he contacted the professor and he was like, I don't want my son to be beaten up. The professor said, okay. And, and then Reginald kind of improved. He managed to learn something. So his dad was really happy. And uh, a couple of weeks later in, in, uh, in April, the, um, the, uh, uh, the, the, the professor, Thomas Hopley, sent a letter to the dad asking permission to do a, a corporal punishment on, uh, on little uh, uh, Reginald. The dad replied, I do not wish to interfere with your plan. So he basically gave permission. The boy was then beaten up that night at the school behind me. Uh, some of the servants, they heard the boy uh, screaming until midnight, so he was beaten up for two hours. And in the morning, they found his body. He was, he, he was dead in his, uh, in his bedroom in the, in the boarding uh, school. Um, the professor, uh, Mr. Hopley, actually kind of tried to cover up. He organized a private autopsy with a friend of his. He said that the boy suffered from some kind of heart disease and the doctor signed it. He didn't actually uh, uh, check the body at all. And then he, um, uh, he actually covered the, bo the body fully with gloves and everything. So when the family came up to, to, came to pick up the body, he, um, they couldn't see anything, you know. And his brother, his brother was a reverend. He smelled something was a bit fishy there. He had a feeling that, you know, that wasn't right. So he ordered a private autopsy. And oh God, when they removed the clothing of the young boy, he was full of injuries everywhere. Uh, his body was covered in blood and bruises. Some of the wound on his leg were two inches deep. The, the doctor could literally touch the bone. He had been beaten up with um, a skipping rope with some uh, wooden handles at the, at the, uh, at the end. Um, so horrible, horrible beating. I mean, clearly the professor went ridiculously strong. Um, I want to take you on the pier, but I'm a bit worried by the music. I'm, I'm worried I might have some copyright issues. We might just do it and see what happens. Um, the, um, so the, uh, uh, um, the, 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 very sadly, uh, his dad actually died a, a month before, before the trial. He, uh, it was at the time concluded that he died out of a broken heart because in a way he had signed his son's uh, death warrant uh, by saying I do not wish to, to interfere. And would you believe Hopley was very confident. He went to court very confident. He was convinced it was his right to beat up the kids. But at the time it was, you know. Uh, sadly, that was part of, of, of education, really. Um, and th that did not go down as well as he imagined at court. He actually was convicted of uh, uh, manslaughter. He was sent to Millbank Prison in Pimlico for four years, so not bad. And in, in Millbank Prison, he actually uh, wrote some pamphlet about uh, education, like if the guy knew anything about education. And would you believe this is nuts, but the, the dynamic at the time between men and women and kids, uh, that was just ridiculous. His young wife, Fanny, Fanny had, had, had married him when she was 18 and the guy was 36. Uh, when the husband was in prison, she realized that um, um, he had been unfair to her as well and he was very violent with her as well as their kids. Even when she was pregnant, um, uh, uh, he had been beating her up and, and when the baby was born he actually beat up the baby as well. Uh, I know it's horrible but the, the, little, the little child suffered from brain injury. So she, she, she tried to get a divorce. Would you believe uh, the judge found that insu insufficient for a divorce. She was not granted a divorce with a, a murderer or manslaughter, a violent man that created brain injury on their son. I mean, this is nuts. Luckily, that created public out outrage at the time. But instead of trying to go back to court, she actually ran away. She moved to Canada with the boy. Um, so yeah, crazy, crazy case. Oh, they've turned off the music, so let's go on the piano.
hopefully it's uh, it's not coming back um, so yeah that's really I mean it's it, it is nuts but at, at, at the time you know um, men could beat their wife beat their kids uh, it was um, it was crazy anyway we are now on uh, on the Eastbourne Pier beautiful uh, beautiful um, uh, I think it's one of the most beautiful piers I've seen the part just in front of us it's actually new there was a, a big fire here in 2014 there was a Victorian dance floor that completely burned down and um, one more murder before before uh, uh, before we swap to a, a, a more uh, uplifting subject. If you look straight down here in the distance, be behind the white building there, that's the beginning of the crumbles. We had two murders in the in the crumbles, um, 1920 and 1924. 1920, it's a, a girl of 17 that was murdered by two young men, and um, the. Uh, you missed the name of the doctor. So, uh, Kelly, the doctor here is uh, John Budkins Adams. John Budkins Adams. But he's been compared to Harold Chipman. Harold Chipman is a more modern uh, Dr. Death. So it's not the same guy. There's two different uh, doctors. But the one here is uh, John Budkin Adams. Uh, yeah. Let me know if you wanted me to spell that for you. But no worries Sue, no worries for being late you've not missed everything so yeah we had two murders down there and the second one was actually uh, interesting the one in 1924 um, that's a chap called Patrick Mahon he had a mistress a wife and a new girlfriend and um, his, uh, his mistress had just fallen pregnant Emily Belding Kay and um, Clearly, the guy did not want a, a, a baby, and um, he convinced his young mistress to uh, redraw her, her, her saving. He said to her that they were going to leave. He was going to leave his wife, and he'll take her to a new life in um, in uh, uh, South Africa. And he took the lease on a little uh, cottage here uh, in the crumbles over there. And uh, one day, well, he invited her over, and uh, and he murdered her. Um, he, uh, and, and the next weekend he actually invited his girlfriend, Avel, to stay in the cottage when the other girlfriend was dead in a trunk. And Hazel did not wonder why there were so many ladies closing in the, uh, in the apartment. Um, and his wife back in London, she was a bit suspicious because in his jacket she found, um, she found a, a ticket at the time you had those uh, clock rooms at the um, at the train station you could live somewhere so she found a clock room ticket she gave it to a private investigator because she believed her husband might have gone back into uh, gambling and when they got the in investigator got there um, he, uh, uh, he found a bag in the bag there were some smelly bloody underwear with uh, with the initial uh, ebk so that was the initial of, of emily the police came to arrest him the next day when he he, he came to uh, to get the bag and uh, uh, he fairly quickly confessed but he said it was an accident uh, but when they came to inspect the cottage well that was that was horrible uh, he had basically uh, 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 cut her in pieces he had uh, the hurt was in a little uh, biscuit uh, tin box and um, and he claimed when he finally confessed the full story he said when he chopped her head off he tried to put her in a fire in the fire so he was holding her head by the hair on top of the fire and he said she opened her eyes I mean he was probably hallucinating because he was probably feeling so uh, uh, horrible about his own murder but yeah so that's the the murder of the crumbles uh, a bit further down there now let's go I think they've stopped the music so let's go a bit further and let me tell you about a story that's a little bit more of uplifting because we've had quite a few very dark murders here um, in 1929 we had a bit of a political rebellion here it is called the Macintosh Rebellion or the Bathing uh, Rebellion 
you'd have to remember that back in the days, um, swimming was not free because you'd have to rent one of those uh, those bathing uh, oh no music is back well let's try let's see what happens if i have any copyright claim i take i'll take the video down it's really really annoying with live streaming on youtube is that you've got music everywhere you know oh no and it's a famous famous art, artist oh well let's see what happens too late anyway uh so yeah the um the the you'd have to pay so you know you might know those uh, those bathing uh, uh carriage they're like they're like 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 a horse carriage really with um with wheels not a horse carriage but like the type of like a beach hut but with no um with wheels and you take the little uh, the little wooden carriage into the sea so you'd have to rent them that was quite a lot and you'd have to rent a towel as well that was quite a lot of money to give you an idea, out of, uh, let's say, a week here with uh, a, a family, yeah, bathing machine, yeah, exactly, Tish, thank you. Um, that would cost you nearly a hundred quid in two days' money. So that was a, a big amount of money and you could not just go into the water on your own, you know? Well, at least not in Eastbourne. Um, some people had started... Um, uh, some people had started uh, uh, doing that. I'm going to... I'm gonna move away from the music just in case. I'm gonna try the other side, see if it's any better. But for example, in Bognor, Bognor Regis, people used to, to do Macintosh bathing. So you'd basically get in your swimwear at the hotel, come down with a Macintosh, so that's, so that's some kind of a raincoat, uh, drop the Macintosh on the beach, go for a nice lovely swim, and then uh, uh, get back on the beach, put your Macintosh back on and go back to your hotel. That was free. But that was very, very shocking for the, the, wealthy, uh, the wealthy people of Eastbourne, you know. And uh, that was not allowed here. That was one of those bylaws. If you did that here, you'd have some um, council representative that would come and, and give you a, a reprimand, you know. Um, you can see the, the wheel in the distance. And um, so people, people couldn't do that here. And one day, 13 of September 1929, 150 people decided to do it. They were like, we don't care, we'll do it. So they came all with their Macintosh. Some of them were with the bathrobe as well. And uh, they dropped them on the beach and they went for a swim. They were splashing, they were laughing, they were having some fun with the wealthy, um, did I say wealthy Victorian? Not Victorian anymore. The, the, the wealthy uh, people were like, oh, outrageous. And uh, obviously you had the police coming and you had uh, the authorities. And when they came out of the water, they were like, we need your address. We'll send you a reprimand. And, um, and that did not work. After the, after the bathing rebellion, suddenly it became okay to just go into the sea. Suddenly they had to, uh, they had to comply and they had to let people um, not use those bathing machines anymore. Those bathing machines, they were very, very old anyway. Some of them were still Victorians and they smelled. Uh, so people were really happy to finally be free to, uh, to swim and not have to pay for a swim in the, in the, in the channel. I don't like to call it the English Channel because why would it be English? Uh, it's called La Manche, <laughs> but yeah, in the, uh, in the English Channel. Anyway, that's gonna be the end of the tour. Let me know if you have any questions before we go. <laughs> I hope I won't get any copyright claim. If you've missed the beginning of the tour, try to watch to watch it quite soon in case i'm being asked to to remove the video because of the bloody music it is um that's the thing uh, most of you know me from from from, from hego of course on hego of course we did not have this type of uh, issue with music but on youtube we have to be very careful because if the artist wanted to uh, uh, complain about the copyright i would either have to take the video down Oh, I think sometimes you have to give them half of the income. I don't have any income at the moment, so that's okay. But yeah. Oh, you barely heard it. Good, good. Well, yeah, you, you barely heard it, but I think it's computers, you know, the computers have a better hear than humans. <laughs> cool. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Pisas. Thank you, Nikki. Thanks, uh, thanks ever so much for coming, guys. If um, 
If any of you were new to me, uh, make sure you give me a little subscribe. If you are into your dark history, I do quite a lot of those. And um, if you've enjoyed the video, uh, uh, that'd be cool if you give it a thumbs up as well. It does help, uh, it does help uh, 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 more people discover the, the video on, on, on YouTube. And if you want to see a bit more of me, I'm not doing any tours next week because I'm actually going away. I'm going to um, uh, Latvia and Lithuania and Estonia uh, and I'm not allowed to do tours. My friend doesn't want me to do any tour. Uh, thank you, Danny. And uh, uh, if you want to see a bit more of me, then that'll be the week after. We're going to, we're going to jail. Uh, some of you might know I do those Monopoly tours and I ended up on the jail uh, uh, case. So I'll show you the, the area of uh, an iconic London jail. And actually, no spoiler, but some of the, uh, well actually the three murderers of the, the, um, the, the, the Crumbles murder down there, they ended up uh, in that uh, in that prison uh, but i don't want to give you too many clues uh, i want the surprise put the pics oh yeah if any of you took any nice uh, screenshot uh, feel free to uh, feel free to share oh the pics of my holiday oh you know what i'll uh, i'll try to do a few videos anyway so i'm not allowed to do tours but i'll try to do a few videos and hopefully i'll be able to do a little uh, uh, a little youtube video or maybe a few uh, that i can show you uh, when i get back cool thank you kelly thanks everyone for coming if any of you left me a little tip as well uh, thank you very much it's it's greatly uh, appreciated um, if it's on paypal i'm not really able to say thank you on paypal but make sure you know uh, uh, it's very much uh, very much appreciated and uh, buy me a coffee as well i'll send you a little thank you on, on buy me a coffee and um, have a good weekend uh, thanks uh, I, I see a few of you from the other side of the pond so thank you very much for waking up that early for me and um, and hopefully i'll see you uh, the week after uh, next have a good weekend see you soon bye bye I should come to Blackpool, yeah. <laughs> Bye.